What's going on guys? This is Von Link Puma, back with another Borderlands 1 Remastered build video, and today I figured we could go over what I think is the best build for Brick the Berserker, or is it Berserker with an S? I've seen both instances in the game, and definitely let me know how you spell Berserker in the comments section below. But anyway, and as I'm sure many Borderlands 1 players might know, Brick is essentially the first Borderlands game's equivalent to the likes of Salvador from Borderlands 2 or Nisha from the pre-sequel, in that Brick is essentially top tier and is the strongest character in both Borderlands 1 and the remastered version. Unlike other Berserker classes in later games though, Brick is unique in that he primarily specializes in melee attacks through his action skill, Berserk, and also specializes in both explosive elemental weapons, shotguns, and rocket launchers through the use of specific skills and class mods. Now, like my other Borderlands 1 and Borderlands 1 Remastered build videos, my goal here is to put together a skill tree that best showcases Brick's abilities and best takes advantage of most of Brick's class mods. While I would say there are really only two main ways to build Brick, focusing more on how to construct the skill tree for those builds allows you to pick from a wider variety of class mods, which can better determine what type of gear you should actually use. With this said, if you're looking for good weapons to use on Brick, pretty much anything that's explosive element or that's a burst fire rocket launcher that deals explosive damage is usually a great choice. Also, and one last thing before we start, but I should mention that I will be featuring 65 and 69 skill point setups for this video. That way, if you have completed or you didn't complete all of the DLC and get those skill point SDUs, you could still put together your own version of what I'm essentially doing here. And as always, be sure to smash like for Brick as it really helps us determine whether it's spelled Berserker or Berserker. But otherwise guys, let's just go ahead and jump in and start talking about how Brick builds work. Now, Brick is kind of interesting in that unlike a lot of other characters in Borderlands 1 where you're usually choosing between one skill that's in one given tier for a given skill tree, a lot of Brick's builds are usually heavily invested in the tank or middle skill tree, and then they go heavy into Brawler if you're putting together a more melee slash berserker type build, or they go heavy into Blaster if you're looking for more of an explosive slash gun style build. With this in mind, we should probably talk about Brick's tank tree first and why many builds for Brick like to pick up many of the skills from it. Starting with tier 1, we have Hardened, which is a skill that boosts max health, and we have Safeguard, which is a skill that boosts shield capacity. What's interesting about both of these skills is that when compared to the similar skills on other characters, Safeguard provides 8% bonus per level, while Lilith's D.Va provides about 5%. This also extends to Brick's Hardened skill, which provides 12% bonus per level when compared to Roland's 5% per level with Fitness. Keep in mind that like Lilith and Roland, Brick is getting these skills at Tier 1, and he's getting Superior Bonus, which makes both of these skills highly desirable for both melee and explosive builds. Moving on to Tier 2, we have both Bash and Juggernaut. Much like we just discussed with Safeguard and Hardened, Juggernaut ends up being a popular choice due to the superior resistance it provides. It totally outdoes Roland's Grit, and while Lilith's Silent Resolve is maybe a bit stronger, Juggernaut is a kill skill, and thus it's quicker and easier to activate. As for Bash, it tends to be popular for Berserking since the Daze effect slows down enemies and reduces their accuracy. It also slows down their attack somewhat, potentially allowing you to get in a bunch of free hits with minimal risk to Brick. So, much like Tier 1, I would say Tier 2 skills are great, though I will say Bash is more melee oriented. Tier 3, on the other hand, while not exactly like the other two tiers, also has great general skills as well. For example, Die Hard is a skill that not only increases the amount of health you regain upon achieving a second wind, but it also increases the amount of fight for your lifetime you have. This would be a great skill to have on any character, and it only boosts Brick's staying power in combat. As for Payback, it boosts your damage for 10 seconds if you lose your shield. This affects both melee punches while berserking, and it also affects conventional weapon damage too, which like many other skills in this tree, makes it useful for a wide variety of builds. So again, you'll often see both of these skills get maxed in most builds. 
As for the capstone, Unbreakable works a lot like Payback does, however it provides shield regeneration to the player rather than a damage boost. This effect is really nice for explosive slash gun style builds as you can quickly regain your defenses, however it doesn't seem to work with the Berserk action skill. Thus and for melee builds it's often avoided and these points end up being used elsewhere. Still though, Unbreakable is a nice skill and as long as you're not using Berserk a lot, it's definitely recommended for your build. Now, with the tank tree out of the way, it's about time we talk about Brick's more specialized trees and for now, we'll talk about the melee or brawler tree. In tier 1, we have Iron Fist and Endless Rage, with Iron Fist boosting melee damage by 6% per level, while Endless Rage increases your berserk duration by 10% per level. Obviously, if you're going to be doing a lot of berserking, you're going to want both of these tier 1 skills, hence why many players end up specking for both. Moving on to tier 2, we have Sting Like a Bee, or Slab, which is a skill that's designed to dash towards enemies to perform melee attacks while berserking, while Heavy Handed is a kill skill that boosts melee damage. Heavy Handed's effects are actually more powerful than Iron Fist's as the bonus is 12% per level, so assuming you're putting together a melee build, it's advised you pick this skill up. As for Sting Like a Bee, it just improves your range with melee attacks while berserking by allowing you to dash towards enemies while punching them. The range bonuses for Sting Like a Bee can get pretty high, and I don't think you'll need the full 5 out of 5 bonus here, but it's still a great skill for berserker melee builds. So if you're doing a melee build, you're probably going to want both of these to some capacity. When it comes to tier 3, this tier actually has a definitive choice. While Prizefighter might sound cool as you can get free money by punching enemies, it's really kind of a waste of skill points since money has never really been worth it in any of the Borderlands games. This actually ends up being especially the case in Borderlands 1, where ammo costs are fairly low compared to the scaling costs of ammo in, say, Borderlands 2 for instance. With that in mind, Short Fuse wins out by default, which if you ask me is a good thing since it's a nice skill for reducing your cooldown for Berserk. So with that in mind, if you're using Berserk a lot, you're definitely going to want Short Fuse. That brings us to our capstone for the tree, which is Bloodsport. This is a skill that offers health regen to the player provided you defeat an enemy while berserking, and I suppose serves as a nice alternative to Unbreakable, which unfortunately doesn't work while berserking. Plus, when you combine Bloodsport with a Berserker class mod, you can get the percentage healed per second pretty high, and when this gets combined even further with other survivability based skills like Die Hard and Juggernaut, it can make melee brick pretty tough to take down thus making this skill a highly recommended choice for any Berserk style build. All in all though, if you're going with the melee build, you're probably going to want most of the skills from this tree with the exception of Prize Fighter. And with that point made, let's move on to the second specialized tree, which is the Blaster Tree. As the name implies, the Blaster Tree primarily deals with guns and explosives, and starting with Tier 1, we have both the Endowed and Rapid Reload skills. Endowed is a skill that boosts your explosive damage while Rapid Reload increases the reload speed and reduces your recoil. As you might guess, Rapid Reload is good for all weapons, but is especially great on weapons with slower reload and bigger magazines like machine gun type combat rifles. Endowed is obviously perfect for explosive weapons and since Brick specializes with explosives in general, picking up this skill is generally a good idea. So if you're using guns, you're realistically going to want both of these skills. This brings us to tier 2, which features both the Revenge and Wide Load skills. Now, Revenge is a pretty powerful kill skill that will improve your damage with all weapons for its duration. At 5 out of 5, you're getting a 50% damage boost, which is pretty substantial and should make most small projectile weapons noticeably more powerful. As for wide load, it can make most launchers far more useful due in part to how it greatly increases their magazine size. If you figure most launchers have a mag size of like 2 to 4, 5 out of 5 in wide load can increase that to 7 to 9, allowing you to fire way more shots. So if you're using launchers at all, having this skill might be good to have and given that explosive weapons work well on brick, having a nice explosive launcher with 7 round mags as opposed to 2 to 3 would certainly be beneficial. As for tier 3, I feel kind of mixed on both of these skills. 
Liquidate is a skill that reduces your cooldown time for your Berserk action skill, provided you deal explosive damage to enemies. This is actually fairly useful for a Berserk melee type build, however, I don't think it's quite as useful for a more gun or pure explosive type build. After all, you're really going to be berserking with an explosive type build anyway, and it's one of those things where even if you do berserk, it's more so going to be between fights so you can recover some lost health. Or at least that's what I do. When it comes to cast iron, it's just a skill that boosts your explosive resistance. This could be good to have when you're using explosive launchers, and it helps in the situations you encounter enemies with explosive weapons, but beyond that, the skill isn't really all that special or flashy. So, while I do recommend you place some points in both Liquidate and Cast Iron, I don't think these are going to be like your go-to skills like maybe some of the previous skills in the skill tree are. The Capstone, on the other hand, which is Master Blaster, is actually pretty awesome. Similar to Roland's Metal Storm, Master Blaster is a kill skill that increases fire rate, and when this gets combined with the absurd 50% damage bonus from 5 out of 5 in Revenge, you can get a tremendous amount of DPS out of Brick. One of the better parts of Master Blaster, though, is that it possesses a similar effect to Roland's Grenadier skill, in that it allows the player to regenerate Rocket-type ammo. With 5 out of 5 in the skill, you're guaranteed to regen 1 rocket per activation, and assuming you can keep the kill skill active long enough with consistent kills, you could regen your entire rocket ammo pool. In my opinion, this aspect of the Master Blaster skill ends up working really well, since rockets are usually used sparingly, so you could deplete your rocket ammo, casually play and take out some enemies for 5 minutes, and then all of a sudden have your rocket ammo totally replenished all while getting a great DPS boost for your character thanks to that inherent fire rate boost. Alright, so now that we've gone over all of the skills and the skill trees pretty in depth, it's about time that we now actually talk about the build or the skill tree setup. So with that in mind, let's just go ahead and start with our melee setup. As you can see, we have heavy skill point investment into both the brawler and tank trees. Because we're primarily using melee attacks and our Berserk action skill, it makes a lot of sense to go into the Brawler tree in particular. After all, skills like Iron Fist and Heavy Handed should improve our damage with melee attacks, Endless Rage will improve the duration of our action skill, while Short Fuse will reduce the cooldown on our action skill. The Capstone, on the other hand, will allow us to get some additional survivability, provided you score a kill while Berserking. So, that's why we've got Bloodsport maxed out. This leaves us with the two remaining skills in this tree. Um, I didn't spec for Prize Fighter simply for the fact that you don't really need that money anyway, and when it comes to Sting Like a Bee, I think you'll find that moderate investment here is usually better than fully maxing it out. Plus, if you're concerned about the range, you can always equip a Skirmisher class mod, which happens to boost Sting Like a Bee. As for our tank tree, I think it's pretty self-explanatory. Hardened and Safeguard for Tier 1 are great choices because they provide a flat max health and shield capacity boost. Juggernaut from Tier 2 is obviously great because it provides some damage reduction. And as for Tier 3, both Payback and Die Hard are good for either boosting the damage of your melee attacks or providing more health and increasing your fight for your lifetime. So, if you ask me, for a melee build, you can't really go wrong with maxing out any of these skills. With this said, you will notice that I didn't go fully into Bash from Tier 2, and I didn't pick up the Capstone. Like I mentioned earlier, I didn't pick up Unbreakable simply for the fact that it doesn't work with Berserk, and when it comes to Bash, I think you'll find if you're going to land more than 5 consecutive punches on an enemy, that enemy is going to be dazed, so the difference between 40% dazed chance versus 50% dazed chance doesn't really matter that much. Plus, and if it's a concern, just equip a Skirmisher class mod like I discussed with Sting Like a Bee, as both Sting Like a Bee and Bash are boosted by that class mod. At this point, this leaves us with the investment in the Blaster Tree. Mainly, I'd recommend you just put 11 points here so you can get 1 point in Liquidate. And this is mainly because we're going to be using our Berserk action skill a lot, and having a way to cool it down a little bit faster with an explosive weapon is generally a good idea. 
As for what skills you might want to boost so you can get Liquidate, it's really kind of up to you, but what I decided to do here is go with Endowed, because Endowed will improve the explosive damage of your punches with the explosive artifact. And then of course, Rapid Reload will improve your reload speed and recoil reduction. Again, it's really up to you what you want to spec for to get that one point in Liquidate. Just try to get that one point in Liquidate so when you do inevitably use some explosive weapons, you can use that to quickly cool down your action skill and then get back to using your action skill. Now, you'll notice that I've put together a 69 point skill tree here. So assuming you don't have all 69 skill points and you only have 65, here is where I would make some cuts. In my mind, there's really one of two things you can do. You can either totally cut Sting like a bee and then maybe cut one point from Bash, or you can just cut two points from both Sting Like a Bee and Bash. The latter option makes a little bit more sense if you're going to be using a Skirmisher Com, while the former option is more so meant to help preserve your Bash skill. Otherwise, I'd recommend you mostly leave everything else the same since you're going to want those melee bonuses from Brawler, most of the defensive bonuses from Tank, and I still think you're going to want that one point in Liquidate for better Berserk cooldown. Obviously, feel free to experiment, but this is where I would make cuts. Now, there's not really a whole lot to say for the melee class mods for Brick, other than that you're going to want a Skirmisher class mod and a Berserker class mod. And with the way we've spec'd out everything here, you should be able to take advantage of both of those class mods. However now, let's talk about the explosive slash gun style build for Brick. As you can see, I've not gone into Brawler at all, and I've pretty much maxed out all of the skills in Tank and Blaster. Speaking of the blaster tree, you can see that I picked up Endowed, Rapid Reload, Revenge, Wide Load, Cast Iron, and Master Blaster and maxed all of them out. All of these skills contribute to impressive weapon damage boosts with Endowed and Revenge working especially well in that specific case. Master Blaster and Rapid Reload on the other hand complement each other pretty well for a good DPS boost, and because Master Blaster also allows you to regenerate rockets, it's also a great option. Plus, you also have Wide Load, which is going to improve the magazine capacity of your rocket launchers, so it's definitely worth picking that up. This, of course, leaves us with the skills in Tier 3, which, as I mentioned earlier, they're sort of not especially amazing or anything. Um, I would recommend you just go ahead and max out Cast Iron, because you're better off putting points here rather than putting them into Brawler. And when it comes to Liquidate, you're probably not going to be berserking all that much, but still, just put some extra points here that you have left over, because you may find that it's useful to berserk to recover some of the health that you've lost. As for the tank tree, you can see we've maxed it out entirely. While I would say Bash is probably not as useful, as you're not going to probably be using melee all that much, the rest of the skills in this tree will definitely be useful. Plus, and unlike the more melee-centric setup, we can now take advantage of the shield regen bonus from Unbreakable as well, so it makes sense to spec into that and max it out. Now, like before with the melee skill tree, we are using a 69-point skill tree here. If you only have 65 skill points, what I would recommend you do is either cut Bash, cut Liquidate, or just cut a little bit from both. As I've said previously, you're probably not going to be meleeing all that much, so you're probably not going to be taking advantage of Bash as much. And when it comes to Berserking, you're also probably not going to be Berserking a whole lot, so when you do actually use Berserk, you may not need the full bonuses that I've spec'd for in the 69-point skill tree for Liquidate. Feel free to experiment, but what I would do is I would leave at least one point in Bash, so we can use that one point in Bash to get boosted from the Blastmaster Com. But again, just try things out and see what works for you. Going back to class mods though, the major benefit of building Brick this way is that it allows you compatibility with a huge variety of Brick's class mods. With both the 69 and 65 skill point setups that I went over, you should be able to take advantage of the Blastmaster Com, which is going to be your definitive class mod for explosive weapons, the Bombardier class mod, which is designed for rocket launchers, the Ogre Com, which is designed for shotguns, the Tank Com, which is meant to improve your shield capacity, 
the Titan Calm, which is meant to boost your max health, the Centurion Calm, which is another max health calm that the whole team of players that you're playing with can benefit from. And finally, you can also benefit from the Warmonger Calm, which is a more offensive-based co-op class mod that boosts team damage. Keep in mind this is 7 class mods this skill tree spec can fully take advantage of, which is pretty impressive considering that Brick only has 11 class mods. You could even potentially bump this up even higher if you include the Badass or Torg Loyalty Com and the Common Man or TD or Loyalty Com. Both of these boost skills and brawler that you're never going to use, but if you can get past that, you may find that you get a lot of benefits out of these class mods as well. So that would actually bring you up to 9 out of 11 of Brick's total class mods that you can use with this particular spec. Overall, this makes this skill tree spec really versatile and it should allow you to run pretty much any weapon setup with it. Though obviously, explosive weapons do tend to work best. At the end of the day guys, I think you'll find that Brick is a pretty powerful, if not the most powerful character in the game. What's also great about him is that it's pretty simple to put together a build for him as you're usually just maxing out one skill tree or the other and then you're fully going down the middle for the tank tree. Of these two builds, I would say the explosive style build is probably stronger, however the melee brick build has the advantage of requiring minimal gear to pull off. Otherwise guys, I think that's going to wrap up this particular video. If you enjoyed this video or if it helped you, definitely be sure to leave a like, click the bell so you can be notified when I upload more videos, and as always, and again, thank you all so much for supporting this channel. Take care, and I'll see you all in the next one.